In our classes so far, we had seen how to generate JWT token for Oracle Fusion applications and call Fusion REST APIs with the same token. That is without using IDCS instance, we had generated this JWT token that is only with Fusion. In this class, we will see, suppose if you are calling this Fusion REST APIs within your Oracle integration, then how we can generate this JWT token at runtime within the integration instance and call the Fusion APIs that is using JWT user assertion. So you need to follow the same steps for calling this Fusion REST APIs with the help of JWT token within Oracle integration. So all the steps what we have used in order to call the Fusion APIs in our earlier classes from Postman. So same steps we have to follow. First thing is we have to generate the key pair. Then we have to register this trusted issuer for the API authenticator provider in the Fusion instance. Then coming to this step number C that is generating the token. In our earlier class, what we had done is we had made use of this Node.js code in order to generate the token. And when we ran this Node.js statement or the JavaScript function, we got this JWT token with the help of which we were calling this Fusion REST API using the Postman. Now, in order to achieve the same with the help of Oracle integration, we have to generate the same. But the problem is Oracle integration does not run Node.js library or JavaScript functions. So it supports only plain JavaScript function. So we will write our code in the plain JavaScript function and generate this JWT token within the integration instance. Also, we had seen that when we generate the JWT token for Fusion, in the header, we need three things. One is algorithm type and the X5, that is a thumbprint. And in the payload, we have to tell who is the issuer. So this should match with what we had provided over here in the API authenticator step, that is in the step number B. So all those things we had gone through in detail in our earlier class, you can have a look at this, how we can validate so and so forth things. Now let me just walk you through the integration code in order to achieve this use case that is to generate the JWT token for Oracle Fusion instance and call the APIs. Here is the simple integration I have created. I have exposed this over a REST protocol. I will show you while testing what this integration accepts in the input and what will be the output. Next, coming to the first step, I am making use of the JavaScript library in integration and I have written the JavaScript code similar to what we had written in the Node.js. I will walk you through this code shortly. Next, once we generate this JWT token, I am calling the Fusion API with the next step. That's it. These are the two steps we need in order to call any Fusion API with the help of JWT user assertion. Now first and the foremost thing, I will walk you through this integration. That is, I will run this integration and I will show you how this JWT user assertion works. I am here in the testing window for this integration. That is the Fusion JWT token in. I have created this path parameter that is here if you see over here in the URL, trigger slash and the username. So you can follow the same thing or you can pass this username in the body. So it's the same thing I'm passing over to my JavaScript function in order to generate this JWT token. So once we pass the username on behalf of whom we have to generate the token and call the Fusion API. Next step is I am calling this JavaScript function which I have written in this integration instance. So as the output of the JavaScript function, we will be getting this JWT token. So using this token, what I am doing is in the next step, I am calling the Fusion REST API. So while calling the Fusion REST API, you have to Enable this authorization header in the request where I'm passing bearer space and then the token what we get in the earlier step. So this is the second step and we can call any REST API with this method. So for the demonstration purpose, I'm calling the same API that is public workers API in this case as well. So in the response, if you see over here, let me just minimize this. And in the response, if you see over here, we will get the 200 status, which means it is success. We should not get 400401 so and so forth things, which means if they are unauthenticated users, 200 is success. Now let me come back to this integration and I will show you the JavaScript. So with this step, I'm calling the JavaScript function, which I've imported over here. So this is the JavaScript function I have created. Let me just open this. JS RSA sign. This is the library I'm using and my code is over here. That is in the generate JWT and the supporting functions I have written for my J generate JWT because we cannot use the node.js libraries over here. 
So we have to write all the code in order to convert string to hex, base 64 to binary, all those things manually. So this is the main function which I have created in order to generate the JWT token. So here is the walkthrough on the function. So in the request, I am accepting the key ID, ISS, AUD and private key and the public key. I will show you where I have stored this information. And this is the function using which I am generating this JWT user assertion token. So this is how I am calling the JS RSA sign library that which we have imported over here. And in the end, I am returning the sign token with this function. As we had discussed the header and the payload for fusion, it should match exactly like this as we had shown in this document in the earlier classes also we had explained in detail. So we won't go in depth into this concept as we had already covered those concepts. So this is the function which we need to import into our Oracle integration instance. Now coming to this JavaScript action in our integration, when we make a call to this JavaScript library, we have to pass all the parameters which it accepts as I am creating 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 parameters. Accordingly, we have to pass the details. For simplicity purpose or for the reusing purpose, I am storing all the value in the lookup. So this is the first thing. Next, let me show you the next step. I am calling the Fusion REST API over here that is Public Workers API. Just make sure you enable this standard header in the request and you select authorization. This is the most important thing while calling any Fusion REST API. Then you can call any of the APIs for demonstration purpose. I am calling public worker. So this step will be applicable for any Fusion REST API in your case. Now coming to this mapper over here. So the output of this JavaScript function is the JWT token, what we get from this library. So we need to pass this in the authorization header. Let me expand the header over here. In the authorization, if you see, I'm using concatenation, bearer space, and then the authorization header. You have to make sure the connection what we use in order to invoke the Fusion REST API in the connection, we should not use any security. So it should be empty or no security policy as we are passing the credential at the runtime in the authorization HTTP header. So here is the quick walkthrough or the overview on the connection which I am using in order to call this Fusion API. If you look over here in the security, I am selecting no security policy. So this is what we need to use in order to call the Fusion REST API. There are only couple of steps in order to call any Fusion REST API within your integration with the help of JWT token. First step is JavaScript action. It will generate the token. Same token we have to pass in the authorization HTTP header. That's it with this code. Now let me go to the lookup that which we use in order to populate this or pass the details to this JavaScript input arguments. Here is the quick overview on the lookup which I have used in order to populate or pass the details to the JavaScript function. KID is of least importance as I am just passing this as a dummy argument. I am not using anywhere in the code over here. If you want to use, you can use as a one more parameter. But in the payload, it is not accepted by Fusion. So important is passing ISS. This is nothing but this is the trusted issuer name which we configure over here in the Fusion. That is while creating Oracle API authenticator provider in step number B. Next, coming to the certificates, these are the files which we generate in the step number A, that is public key and the private key, private key.pm and the pub.pm. So these are the things. AUD is nothing but your Fusion instance URL. We can provide it over here. So following those steps, you can generate the JWT token and you can call any Fusion REST API using the JWT user assertion tokens. So with this, you can avoid hard coding the basic authentication or the credentials everywhere in your code. And also you can impersonate a user and call any Fusion REST API on behalf of that user.